Hey everyone, welcome to Sarah's Cross-Dressing Stories. Today I'm going to share with you Sister's Plan and my beginning part 76. If you're new to the channel then please subscribe now for more captivating stories and, please support me on Patreon and get early access at patreon.com slash sarah101. Mr. Grinnan was grinning from ear to ear. With obvious elation in his voice, he said, DD, I'm so happy that I can't express it in words. Those three were almost the death of this company. It was a sad day when they got control. I smiled back at him. Well, with a little luck and lots of hard work we can bring this company back from the brink. From now on, when you answer the phone it's the Piermont Paper Company. Okay? Yes, ma'am, he said happily. And those three are not allowed in the plant, Eric. If you have any problem with them, call me at headquarters in Vermont, otherwise you'll report to Mr. Warren for now. Yes, ma'am. By Monday you'll start having people descend upon you from Vermont, and we'll start rebuilding this business. Yes, ma'am. I smiled at his two-word responses. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what's the telephone number of the offices in Vermont? Bob Warren gave him his business card and said, I'll be back down here next week. Probably Tuesday. Just keep doing business as normal, for now. Yes, sir, Mr. Warren. You can call me Bob, Eric. Okay, Bob. We said our goodbyes and left. Earl was asleep in the car but the motor was running and the interior was nice and warm. Earl woke up from the movement of the car as we climbed in. We were barely underway when John said excitedly, that was incredible, D.D. I never expected them to go for it from the way that they were acting. I'll remember never to play poker with you. Yes, congratulations, D.D. Well played, Bob Warren said. I have to add my kudos also, D.D., Bill Marshall said. Very well done. Good thing that you got that tax and lien information. It's obvious that they weren't going to tell you until after the papers were signed, if then. Thank you, gentlemen, I said. John said, I never imagined that they'd settle for only $750,000. I'm glad that you were negotiating. I would have offered several times that amount. This was vastly different from the situation at Piermont, John. They didn't care about the company or the employees, they were only looking to siphon off what they could in order to enjoy an overly luxurious lifestyle. Even though the plant is much larger than our current plant at Brandon, the equipment is run down and they've all but destroyed the business. It's going to be difficult bringing back the customers. Now, how much is it really going to cost to repair the equipment? I didn't lie. The amounts that I quoted of $150,000 to get the lines going and $250,000 to get them in good condition are the amounts really required if you called up the factory and had them send reps to do the work. But, since we have our own personnel, I estimate that it will cost less than $40,000 in man-hours and parts. For that it will be in tip-top condition. Mike O'Connell says that the box manufacturing equipment will need about $8,000 to $10,000 in parts to bring it back to prime working condition. How soon can you start? I can free up two guys right away without impacting Piermont since we have the new men that we hired for the third shift. Mike O'Connell knows this plant and the equipment, forwards and backwards. He even told me what to look for on each machine. He'll be the senior man and I can send one of the younger guys to assist. It'll be a great learning experience for the new man. We can free up another two engineers if they're really needed, but that will leave us with just one man per shift in Vermont. Okay. Keeping box production going is the most important factor right now. We don't want to lose any more customers. Send your two men and have them concentrate on the box-making equipment. 
We don't need the paper making equipment just yet since we have building number two in Brandon ready to go when needed. Bill? I'll come down with Ron and two of my people on Monday, Bill said, and we'll start organizing the files. Once we get a feel for what has to be done, I can leave them to work there while I return. Excellent. Bob, any thoughts? It's going to be tough sledding for a couple of months, D.D. I'll get together with Portland and get the paperwork for the purchase started. Then I'll contact the bank and inform them that we'll need 1.5 million now and possibly another 1.5 million over the next several months. The first 1.5 million will pay off the owners and clear up the back taxes and the lien. We'll start contacting creditors right away to verify the account's payable information and inform them that as soon as the transfer is complete and we get the accounting system under control, we'll start reducing the debt. That will stall any action that they might have planned for at least 90 days. Then it's just a matter of trying to win back the business that they've lost. We'll have all of the customer invoice files transferred up to company headquarters in Brandon so Matt and his people can go to work on that job after they become acquainted with the product lines. I told Mr. Goldblum that we'd include him in the transfer, I said it was his investigator that got the information about the back taxes and liens so quickly. That not only saved us some problems, but gave me the information needed to close the deal. That's the problem with moving so quickly, D.D. You really need time to look into all of these matters before you close a deal to buy a property. You really have to slow down a little when you're contemplating an acquisition like this. But sometimes you'll lose it if you hesitate. Bill Marshall said, I noticed from the accounting records that Oak Mill Paper's largest creditor is Southcore. They were continuing to ship on open account after everyone else, including us, had stopped, even though they weren't receiving any payments. It sounds like they were letting Oak Mill Paper hang itself so they could claim the body as the primary creditor. I think that primary creditor would be a more apt name for those people, Bob said. I smiled at the comment and said, Southcore isn't going to be happy about losing another plant to us. We continued to talk about the job ahead for the rest of the trip. Even though it meant a lot of work, the thought of bringing a company back from near death was exciting. I never would have even considered it if Piermont hadn't been doing so unbelievably well. The question was, could we do it again? The new plant would more than double our capacity at a time when we were only using one-third of our present capacity. We would have to rely on the paper box business to carry the load of the new plant temporarily. At least the company wouldn't have to support junkets to Las Vegas or drug party sailing trips to nowhere. It was dark and almost six o'clock when we arrived back at the office. Since we were running a full second shift, the parking lot was more than a third full although most of the spaces nearest the yard entrance were vacant because the first shift had gone home. As usual, the guard saluted as the limo passed. Did you see that? John said. Vern actually saluted us. This is the limo carrying the company president, Bill said quietly. Oh, right, John said. Earl stopped in front of the building to let us out. I told him that I would be back in ten minutes so he might as well wait here. Bill and John went to their first floor offices while Bob and I rode the elevator to the second floor. I gave Bob the letter of intent because he would handle the transfer from this point on. I put my other files in my office and checked through the messages on my desk. There wasn't anything that required immediate attention, so I dropped them back on the desk and left. As Earl drove us back to the Holiday Inn, I realized how tired I was. The excitement of the day had taken more out of me than I had realized. Friday was the day of our regular weekly meeting. Nancy set up the conference table and arranged for snacks and lunch. A little before 10 o'clock, the senior managers began showing up, and we started the meeting promptly at 10. I opened with, Good morning. By now, I'm sure that everyone here has gotten the word that we purchased Oak Mill paper yesterday. 
for those that were not involved in the purchase arrangements, let me say that we have a tremendous amount of work ahead of us as we try to get the plant back to profitability. The equipment has not been maintained and the customer base has declined due to a variety of factors. The next few months will be difficult, but I know that you're up to the task. I'd also like to welcome Ron Collins to his first meeting. Bill expects to be returning home next month and Ron will assume his duties. Bill has done an excellent job for us and he will be missed, but I know that he's anxious to return home. Ron, you have big shoes to fill. Okay, we'll begin as usual with status reports. Bob? Bob Warren cleared his throat. Things were starting to get a bit complacent around here until two days ago. DD has a way of shaking things up. We now have a major new challenge ahead of us. The Oak Mill acquisition more than doubles our capacity, so the sales department will have their work cut out for them. Initially, we'll concentrate on the paper box business for the Greenfield plant. That's the designation from now on, by the way. Until their paper production equipment is in operation, we'll supply Greenfield's paper and paperboard needs, which will help keep the new third shift busy right from the start. After Greenfield's paper production equipment is operational, they'll make their own paper and paperboard, with excess capacity being used to fill company orders. I estimate that Greenfield's boxing operation will only need 1% of its own paper-making capacity at the startup of the paper-making operation and 5% of its total capacity if we reach three full shifts in boxing. That will leave us with a lot of excess paper-making capacity. The Greenfield plant will not be legally transferred until next week, but we're considering it part of our division now because we have a signed letter of intent from the owners, with only the pending funds transfer holding up title change. As you can imagine, the records down there are probably a real mess because they were trying to reduce expenses by limiting personnel to the barest minimum needed to keep the business going. We'll have to reorganize things and teach them our accounting procedures, but most of the office functions will be transferred up here anyway. We don't have to worry about a massive layoff because of the already reduced staff size. I'll be traveling down to Greenfield on Tuesday. By then we should already have a better picture. Thank you, Bob. Mr. Marshall? I was at Greenfield yesterday and had a chance to get a preliminary look at the books. We're going to have a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm confident that we can get it under control before I leave. Ron and I will be going down there Monday with two of our people so that we can start. We talked about it this morning and decided that the best thing to do will be to box everything up and bring it back here where we have the resources of the entire department to work on it. The accounting people from Greenfield, who will remain with the company, will come up here to be trained in our procedures before being returned with the appropriate records. Thank you, Bill. I think that your idea to bring everything back here is sound. Mr. Piermont? This whole deal kind of caught me by surprise. I had no idea that you were looking to acquire the Greenfield plant but we'll do our best to handle the sales end as soon as we find out what we're selling and how much it costs. The answers should be in those records that Bill will ship back here. On the home front, sales have been brisk and judging from the amount of repeat business, our customers have been happy with our products and service. Thank you, Matt. Mr. Fahey? I spoke with Mike O'Connell last night. He left for Greenfield this morning with Rich Dwyer. They should be there by now, in fact. As we discussed last night, they'll concentrate on getting the box-making equipment repaired first. Only after everything is running almost perfectly will they look at the paper production equipment, and Mike will call me every evening with a status report. I wouldn't be surprised if Mike requests a transfer to Greenfield, since he comes from down there and his family is still there. I'll hate to lose him. Everything is running fine here in Brandon, but it appears that we'll have to resume our hunt for more engineers now. Thank you, John. Mr. Harris? Everything has been running smoothly, but it appears that I'll be busy calling vendors again. 
I spoke to Bob earlier and he asked me to help out by contacting Greenfield's creditors and explaining the situation about the takeover and that we'll be paying everyone off once the transfer is complete and we have organized the accounting records. Thank you, Ben, Mr. Phillips. We've filled almost all of the vacant positions here. I'll get to work on finding a couple of engineers for John as soon as I know where they'll be working. I'll also get the employee records from Bill when they're shipped up here so I can start looking at possible rehires for Greenfield as it gears up. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Turbill? Everything is great in plant and warehouse operations. The rumor mill spread the word on the Greenfield deal this morning. Everyone views it as a positive sign that the company is stable and their jobs are secure. I don't have any problems to report. Thank you, Mike. Okay, is there any new business on anyone's mind? Everyone was silent, so I said, I have one thing. When I entered college in September, I received a college ID with my picture on it. They used a special Polaroid camera that took four pictures at once. I would like to institute a similar policy here. Every employee should have their picture taken when they start work. One copy of the picture will remain in personnel, one in payroll, one in corporate, and the final one will be placed on the employee ID card. The card will be needed for the security at the front gate until the security guards recognize the new employee on site. We will also have to take pictures of all existing personnel. Any discussion? Bob Warren said, it sounds like a good idea. I'm in favor of it. Everyone else nodded agreement, so I said, okay. Ben, I'll let you make arrangements to purchase the camera and institute the program. You should also create a form to attach the pictures to, which lists basic employment information and job history, for the copies that will be sent to payroll and corporate. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything else? That's all for now, see you in the next video. Please share your valuable opinion and please support me on Patreon to get the early access. Link in the first comment.